Welcome back to John's Films. You may notice it looks a little different around here, and that's because we're on a base install of Ubuntu 19.10. So this is a Linux distribution and is my distribution of choice. Blackmagic Design likes CentOS. I'm not a fan. So I installed this for some benchmarking on Ubuntu, and I got some questions. Hey, how'd you make that work? So let's take a look today at how we made it work here in Ubuntu Linux. First thing I did was install the base version with the proprietary NVIDIA graphics cards. Now I am at blackmagic.com support, and I clicked on Resolve and Fusion in the menu above. Then I downloaded the Linux version of Studio 16.1.1. This will work the same as it will in the free version if you do not have a Studio license. It's now downloading the Studio version, and we'll zip ahead. And the download is complete. I've opened this in the Archive Manager so that I can read the installation instructions, which is one of two files that are handed to you. One is a shell script, and one is this installation instructions. The instructions primarily tell you to run CentOS. Again, not my favorite. As you can see on the left, I have opened my terminal window, browsed to my documents folder where I downloaded and extracted the tarball that they sent me, and I ran the script typing dot and slash and then the install script name. Now you can see it's running the normal install that you're used to. In fact, this will complete. It copies the binaries and the configuration files that you would expect to your hard drive. So where's the snag? Well, I can tell you, you saw it looks like it's positively finished the install, and it has. But now I'm going to change directory to opt resolve and bin. Here I will run the resolve, there we go, program dot slash resolve. And it will now tell me what my issue is. Uh, I've tried to run it. It says lib opencl.so.1 cannot open. This is because DaVinci Resolve is referencing a library it believes should be in my operating system. Ubuntu, however, does not include that library from default. So I will search for it here in my browser and ask, how do I install this in Ubuntu? I get a very quick answer with apt, and I'll use apt to now install from a repository. The beautiful thing about searching that, here we go. Direct commands I can run that will download and install the software that I need. If I can type my password right. When it asks you, the Y means yes, I want to download and install. It's capitalized because it is the default. You could just hit enter. Now that I have the libraries installed, I'm ready to run it again. So here in opt resolve bin, you can use the up arrow to run it again. Boom, there we go. I now have the welcome screen. In Linux, you will soon learn to hate the welcome screen. The welcome screen hangs here, and you have to use one of a few different options to delete it or close the program. The first is in the top left corner of your screen, DaVinci Resolve Introduction, quit. The other option is to wait for this to time out and force quit. Either of those work, but you've got to be patient. This will take two, four, five, eight minutes. Get comfortable. This is the only time this will happen. Now I will accelerate the speed here. We're waiting on the force quit to pop up. It feels like forever now. Just wait till you get to do this in real life. Here it pops up, and we're going to choose force quit. That does not mean that it will immediately force quit. However, it does happen pretty quickly. So it kills it off. And now I have DaVinci Resolve Studio launching. We're home free, right? Ah. In the launch dialog here in the focus window, we'll get to a point where it searches for control surfaces, scans for every USB device in my machine, and then it tries to load the waveform monitor. When that happens, it tries to instantiate CUDA. How do I know that? 
Well, let's take a look. I killed off Resolve, and now we can see as I scroll back through the log history that I've got here in my window from running Resolve from the window, I can see where the logs are stored here in my config if I'd like. But I've got some helpful data here in this stream. So I see all the USB devices being referenced as we saw it was trying to find a console. And if I look through it, I can look for keywords like error, or info, or problem. Let's say I don't see anything though. Nothing's calling out to me. So what I've done is I've gone into opt resolve logs. Here there's one file that I've concatenated out to my screen using the cat command, and I will scroll back up through it. This is a line by line log that I can see info, error, and warn messages. So I'm looking through this center column where you see my mouse for error. It says socket failed. Well, that's because it's not able to open a console or panel. I'm okay with that. I don't have one of those. Next, I'm looking at initializing GPU board. This is a good spot to start. And oh, unable to load LibCUDA from user Lib64 LibCUDA. Hmm. Well, I have CUDA installed because I installed the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. Maybe it's a problem where they can't talk to each other. So, hey. I'll search that library. I want to see where I might find it here on my workstation if I have it, or where I can get it if I don't. Check this out. One of the first results is LibCUDA cannot be found. Hmm, that makes sense. Look through it, it looks like, sure enough, it should be there. Oh wait, this log post is from 2016. Boy, that's a while back. You know what, I'm gonna find something else. Now I'll try and find something more specific to my situation. 2016 is a little out there. So I'm looking down, I see 2017, 2018. TensorFlow would also be referencing the CUDA libraries. And look at that. Here's a command I can use to find. So I paste this into my terminal. Sorry, the terminal's below the edge of the window at the moment. And it searches and files the file for me. Now I know I have the file, but it's not necessarily where DaVinci Resolve expects it to be. So I'm going to create what's called a symlink. I'm going to link any reference to libcuda.so here in lib64 to the location my operating system stores that file. I can do that with the command. That creates what's called a symlink. The link is nothing but a traffic sign. It says when you come to user lib64 libcuda.so looking for that file, instead look over here. So here's the command I ran. Then I changed directories to the bin directory under side opt resolve, and again, run resolve from the terminal window. This time, it launches resolve without the welcome screen and with the CUDA libraries enabled. Here you can see we get past the waveform monitor load, and boom, we have a fully working project manager and now resolve. Thanks for watching. Please give me a like if this was helpful to you. Subscribe for more content. And let me know in the comments if you're interested in more Lint-based content. Have a great day.